And so the last type of skill I'm going to talk about is what we call basic speed of processing. Um, this is basically how quickly does the information, say in a visual task, move through the visual system to a decision stage and then to where you can actually make a button press and actually get a response out. And so this is yet another area where playing this type of video game, these action video games, leads to very clear enhancements. Um, so if you look at the entire literature, there's now a pretty substantial number of studies that have shown that playing action video games leads to much faster reaction times, and critically faster reaction times without making more errors. So it's very easy to respond faster if you're willing to make more mistakes. It's much more difficult to respond faster but not make more mistakes. That indicates that you're actually processing the information just as well but faster. So playing these action video games leads to about a 12% increase in speed of processing. Um, they respond about 12% faster without any change in the error rate. They're essentially getting through more responses per unit time correctly. Um, and this is important for kind of a range of skills. Um, almost all aspects of cognitive aging are often linked back to reductions in speed of processing. So as you age, you tend to see that individuals become kind of generally slower at all tasks. Um, so you can think of action video games in this case as being essentially the inverse of this. Um, they're kind of generally faster at all tasks without actually paying a cost and error rate. And so most of the studies in this field have been done with college-aged adults, um, but this is true in older individuals, it's true in younger individuals. Um, for instance, in younger individuals, um, you'll often see effects where, for instance, seven to 10-year-olds who play action video games show the same type of visual capabilities as fully grown adults um, who don't play action video games. So it can be a pretty sizable effect. Um, and the types of training that have been done in children um, have often been for kind of practical reasons. Um, so for instance, um, one common issue in children is dyslexia, which is essentially just a age-inappropriate level of reading ability. Um, so it's an individual who can't read at the level of expected from their age group. And so a group in Italy actually showed that training on action video games improves reading speed. Um, and in their at least view, this is because one of the issues with dyslexia um, isn't just in your ability to, say, link letters to, say, the sounds they go with, so the phonemes. Um, it's actually in the ability to bring in visual information and make it available to the language system. And so their argument is that through action video game training, they actually improve the information that's available um, to be read. Um, and so it actually led to an improvement in Italian dyslexic children. Researchers have recently become interested in, well, we know that action video games lead to these behavioral changes, these enhanced behavioral performance. And so now the question is, what are the underlying neural mechanisms that actually promote these changes? And so one recent study by Jody Mishra and Steve Hilliard at UC San Diego actually used EEG, um, measuring neural activity. Um, many of you have probably seen the little electrodes that can go on the outside of people's head measuring neural activity um, and asking, well, what types of neural signatures are different in action game players versus non-action game players? And so the task that they had subjects do while they were recording their brain activity was a pretty difficult task. Um, the subjects were seated in front of a screen and they saw three streams of letters flashing one after another. So there was a stream of letters flashing one after another on the left side of the screen, stream of letters flashing one another on the right side, and one in the center of the screen. And they were told, for instance, well, I want you to ignore the center stream, ignore the left-hand stream, and just focus on the right side. And what I want you to do is tell me every time you see a digit amongst this stream of letters. So almost all of the items that come up are letters. I want you to tell me when you see a digit actually come up. Now the critical manipulation in this task is that the three streams are actually flashing at slightly different frequencies. Um, so for instance, one may be flashing at 8 hertz, one may be flashing at 10 hertz, one may be flashing at 12 hertz. And this is important because then we can actually go back in to the neural traces and say how much neural activity is being devoted to this stream over here that they're supposed to be flashing at. We can see how much neural power is there at 8 hertz. That's going to tell us how much of their neural processing is being devoted to this stream that they're supposed to be paying attention to. 
And we could also ask how much of their neural processing is being devoted to these two other streams that they are supposed to be ignoring. You know, if they're doing this task in the most perfect way possible, they would completely shut down these two that they're supposed to be ignoring. They're just there to distract them. And they would focus all of their neural processing on this one that they've been told to attend to. Now, what you can see in the data is that, well, the people who play action video games um, actually suppress these distracting streams in the neural signature much more strongly than the people who don't play these action video games. Um, so if you think of kind of this as a signal to noise problem, um, well the signal is this stream over here that they're supposed to be attending to and the noise is how much neural processing is nevertheless devoted to these things they're supposed to be ignoring. The action game players actually have better signal to noise ratios. They're getting in you know essentially the same amount of signature signal but they are tamping down the noise to a greater degree than the non-game players and that's going to lead to really wide benefits. There are lots and lots of tasks in the real world where you want to kind of focus on your task at hand and not let other things distract you. And if you're actually capable of doing this at the neural level, um, then you're actually going to perform those tasks that much better.